yourself Jenny Stitches and welcome back to my channel. It's Thursday afternoon and it's the day after episode 5 of the Great British Sewing Bee. So I'm here for a quick chat through some pattern and fabric inspiration. Um, I've had a bit of a crazy day today, it's got to be said. Um, it's just gone 2 o'clock um, <laughs> and I've, I feel like I've literally been running around with the Benny Hill theme music on behind me because I've been like, ah! So, excuse me if I'm a little bit flushed. So, sewing bee last night, it was really good. Children's week, which was uh, fun. Um, children's sewing is fun. It's small, it's cute. The prints are nice. There's not really a lot not to like about it. Um, I am a mum. I've got um, two children, uh, Jack, who is nine. I have to think about that then. <laughs> and Juliet, who is five. So I have done a fair share of kids makes. I don't make a huge amount for my children, if I'm honest, because they grow very quickly. And um, yeah, that's not the best thing to admit to. A lot of people will say, oh, I bet you sold loads for your daughter. And no, not not that much. But um, But when I do, I do enjoy it and it is fun. So the first challenge that the uh, sewers had to do was a baby and toddler romper um, and it was in a woven fabric, the pattern that they were given. It had uh, little shoulder straps with a crossover back going on to um, a little elasticated waist and kind of like a balloon harem leg. So I've had a look through the pattern books and the drawers and I've come up I honestly could have got about 20 romper patterns out. Simplicity and new look do not disappoint in that regard. So to kick off, I'll show you new look 6293. Um, these are just so cute. I'm kind of disappointed that mine have grown up past that point now. Um, but yeah, that one's good. That's got a little option for a dress as well as some little bloomers and a romper. I picked this one out because on view B with the romper, it's got that nice little harem kind of leg, which is very similar to what they used. Um, another option would be Simplicity 8759. Um, this has a less defined waist on the romper, but it's a nice little pattern because it includes a little jacket and a hat. So you've got, there's another, there's another little hat there, that's cool. So you've got a good few options there for um, different things. I like a pattern that that pays for itself. Um, okay, new look again, new look 6970. This is really sweet. Um, I need somebody in the family to have a baby so I can just make a cute little set. But again, dress or romper. I love that little nautical feel or um, little bloomers with a frill. Oh. Um, that doesn't have the straps, but again, it has the kind of balloon leg. And finally, I picked out Simplicity 1600. Um, this is a part of the vintage range, so it's a reproduction. But what I liked with this one, you get the cap and some bloomers. <laughs> and you get like a little frilly bum bloomer as well, which is cute. But you do get the little crossover straps onto the uh, back, the elasticated back there. So I thought that was very similar to what they used. But it was a really great selection of um, makes and um, things are sort of really potting up a bit now, aren't they? And um, yeah, I really enjoyed watching that. So it, it was it was cool. Um, in terms of fabrics, I'm literally out of breath. I've been running around like, ah! <laughs> um, you need something durable for children. Let's be honest, they they thrash their clothes and ruin them. So nothing too fine. Um, natural fibres if possible, so it's nice and breathable and soft against sensitive skin. So your best friend is always going to be cotton. Um, and cotton comes in so many lovely prints that you're spoiled for choice. I thought I would bring home a couple of poplins to show you that I've got in at the moment. This gorgeous... Um, Pink poplin, I've called this regatta day because it's got little sailboats on it. This print's been in circulation for quite a while now. And a few years ago, I made my daughter a little dress in this. So I will pop a picture of that in there when we went on holiday. 
It was just lovely. So that's really cute. That would be great for summer, summer babies. I think what's nice with a romper as well, you can either just have them just in the romper or you can layer it up with a like a short or a long sleeve vest underneath. So that's kind of handy. Um, and the other one I brought home was this little bee print because I thought this is quite unusual and would look lovely on baby clothes, especially even for maybe a little newborn. See the movement there? I just adore this. Very pretty. Nice unisex as well, that one. If it was for maybe for a baby gift for somebody who didn't know the sex of the baby, um, that would make a great option. Um, and if you weren't fancying a print, this is a chambray. Um, or you could go with a lightweight denim as well, maybe like a four ounce denim. Um, nothing too heavy, obviously, but this is essentially similar weight to the poplins, but lovely and hard wearing. So that's a very neutral one that would go with a lot of things. And finally, um, another great option would be baby card. And I'll show you that one there. So you can see if I lift that up, just the very fine ribs there, very soft, but um, card is quite hard wearing. So that would be a nice option. And again, I made my daughter a pair of dungarees, like a romper type pair of dungarees when she was a baby, in a baby card. And I will pop a picture of that in for you as well, because it's really cute, so why not? <laughs> um, but that's that's a really nice option. You could even do it in a plane. That could work. Okay, so that was the pattern challenge. Um, and then there was the transformation which was really good fun. I think this week's transformation was a little bit more realistic for me because as a mum, I often get that sort of last minute call to make some random fancy dress costume. So running around the house, finding odd objects to turn into a fancy dress is, is not inconceivable. Um, so that put them onto the made to measure challenge, which was a child's raincoat. Um, I absolutely loved watching this. Uh, sent a text to my mum halfway through and said this looks like fun I could really enjoy doing it and some of the fabrics that they used were just amazing and in particular I thought that um Damien's idea of using a shower screen a, a shower curtain was just fabulous because you can get some really really good prints and kind of got me thinking like maybe one with like little ducks on would have looked good to do that and yeah I, I just thought that was a really neat way of using up things that you have access to around the house. Um, now, in terms of patterns, I'm going to have to hold my hands up here and say I have scoured my pattern collection and there is nothing for a child's raincoat, which I think is a bit of an oversight. Simplicity, new look, you need to sort that out. However, I am going to pop some links in the comments below to some really good free patterns that I've seen about for raincoats, which you might find useful. And I will also put a link for the Sewing Bee have released the romper pattern for free as well. So I will pop that down below. Um, but I did bring some fabric to show you for the coat option, which is a soft shell. Go there. Now then this is blue with some quite big spots on, which would look really cute over a kid's coat. Now soft shell is um, waterproof on the outside polyester and then on the inside you can see there it's got a soft micro fleece back so you don't actually need to line the soft shell you can just wear it as it is and then yeah cute now for both the romper challenge and the jacket the sewers were mostly using snaps and the judges were quite keen to test whether the snaps worked which makes me quite anxious because if somebody did that to my sewing, I'd be like, no. Um, so I will show you. These are the kind of things that you're looking for. These are prim 12.4 millimeter color snaps and you get 30 of the same color in a box here. So that's quite a lot. So we've got a range of those and to apply them, you would need the Vario pliers here. Um, and these pliers are great because you can use them for 
a multitude of applications, not just for the colour snaps, but for plain snaps, for eyelets, um, jeans, buttons, all sorts of things. So as tools go, these are a really handy addition to your sewing stash, I would thoroughly recommend. So I will pop a link to those down below. Um, a top tip if you are applying anything like snaps and eyelets and that kind of thing is to really interface the back of where it's going to go. In particular, if you're using a stretch fabric, make sure that you put in some good chunky layers of uh, maybe like bits of scraps um, of woven fabrics to really give it some grip. Because um, ask me how I know, put eyelets in and they popped straight out. So <laughs> you live and learn. Okay, I think that's about everything. Um, just a quick one from me this week. Um, things are getting really, really busy for me at the moment, which is brilliant, but also quite a lot to keep up with, not just with um, these videos, but with the shop is progressing nicely. Um, I think I've spent most of this week chasing BT to go and get a phone line installed. Um, so it's all starting to come to a head. Um, the plastering work is done, it's started to be painted, so it's really starting to take shape and hopefully in the next few days we should be getting the, the boards will be coming off the front and we should be able to get a, a bit of a better look of what's going on inside, so I'll try and get some content for you there soon, but at the moment I kind of don't want to go and intrude on the builders <laughs> and get in the way. So yeah, I hope you're well. Um, keep sewing, keep tagging me in all your creations. I am on Instagram and Facebook at Jenny Stitches and facebook.com slash Jenny Stitches. It is a pleasure to see you again and thank you for all the nice comments that you've left below. And if you did enjoy this video, please like and subscribe for more of the same. And before I go, um, the dress on Mandy the Mannequin is new look 6646. I will link it below. Um, and it's made in my Emma linen and cotton blend, which is currently out of stock, but I will get some more back in this summer. So you can keep an eye out for that. Take care, have a lovely weekend, and I will see you next week. Bye bye.